Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white Death Shadow deck titled Ranger Danger, as we're playing with a Ranger of Eos, the 4-mana 3-2 human soldier, that when it enters the battlefield lets us search your library for up to 2 creature cards with converted mana cost to 1 or less, reveal them and put them into our hand. And then the card we're going to search up most often is going to be Death Shadow, the 1-mana 13-13 from the latest anthology expansion that gets minus X minus X, where X is our life total. So if we're at 13 or more life, of course we won't be able to play Death Shadow, but as soon as we drop below that life total, Death Shadow can become a very large threat for just one mana. And Death Shadow combines very nicely with Adanto Vanguard, which is another reason to play white in your Death Shadow deck. A 2 mana 1-1 one, one that gets plus 2 plus so as long as it's attacking, and we can pay 4 life at any point to give Adanto Vanguard indestructible until end of turn, which means we can use Adanto Vanguard to lower our own life total to grow our Death Shadow which can potentially surprise the opponent and kill them out of nowhere. Then we've got a bit of additional utility with our Ranger of Eos as we've got additional 1-drops to search up, including one copy of Fairy Guide Mother, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one flyer that can also use the Gift of the Fae Adventure first for 2-mana, giving target creature plus 2 plus 1 and flying until end of turn, so that's a way to give our Death Shadow some evasion if there's a ground stall to potentially kill the opponent in one attack. And then we also have a Giant Killer as a removal spell to destroy target creature with power 4 or greater, and then a 1-2 Human Peasant that for 1 on a white can tap to tap target creature. And then we also have the full playset of Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is just a powerful one drop by itself, a 1-2, that can keep accumulating plus one plus one counters over time, and for two and a black we can also pump and give death touch until end of turn. And then all these creatures also combine quite nicely with Demonic Embrace, which we can put on a card like Knight of the Ebon Legion to give it plus 3, plus 1 and flying, also turns it into a demon. So that way if the Knight of the Ebon Legion attacks as a 4-powered creature, it can enable its own ability to get a plus 1 counter end of turn. Also great with Death Shadow to fly over and give us more evasion, and also great with Adanto Vanguard, which has that built-in indestructible ability. And then we also have the full playset of Scourge of the Skyclaves, which is similar to Death Shadow, looks at both our life total and the opponent's life total to determine how large it's going to be, and can also kick it in a late game for an additional 4 and a black to half each player's life total. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we also have some additional interaction with the full playset of Thoughtseize, which will cost us 2 life in order to take a non-land card from the opponent's hand, so it can also help us reduce our own life total to grow Death Shadow and Scourge of the Skyclaves, and can also combine with our lands like Godless Shrine and Agadim the Undercrypt to lose 4 or more life in the same turn, which will also grow our Knight of the Ebon Legion, since it also tracks if we lost 4 or more life in the same turn, and we can also use that same trick with Adanto Vanguard to help us grow Knight of the Avon Legion. Then we've got the full playset of Fatal Push as a 1 mana instant speed removal spell, and at 2 mana we also get access to Dire Tactics, a 2 mana instant speed removal spell that exiles target creature, and if we don't control a human we also lose life equal to that creature's toughness, so that's another way to potentially lower our own life total, but if we have a giant killer or a range of Eos in play we don't have to lose any life, which can also come in handy. And then of course we've got the full set of Agadim's Awakening, which we can play as an untapped land at the cost of 3 life, or as a sorcery, returning from our graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost X or less, so we can potentially return a 1-drop and a 2-drop if we cast it for 5 mana total. Then we've got our Demonic Embrace, which can also be replayed out of the graveyard at the cost of 3 life, another way to reduce our own life total, and then of course the full set of Ranger of Eos. And then the mana base doesn't have as many pain lands as the Ragdos version of the deck, but we have more ways to lower life total with cards like Adanto Vanguard, so that still gives us access to plenty of life loss if we need it. And then we've got the full set of Godless Shrine, 4 copies of Concealed Courtyard, the Black White Pathway, and then 5 basic swamps and 2 copies of Castle Lochthwain as another card draw engine that can also help us lose life in the late game, and 1 basic planes. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Gigantha, the Wellspring deck, probably a Sacrifice deck. This hand has a lot of removal, which, you know, could be good against a Sacrifice deck. If they're on the Colorless Ramp deck, however, this hand's pretty bad. I'll try it. And then removal into Ranger to grab some threats is gonna be quite nice. Alright, Mountain 
It's probably a good sign, all things considered. We'll keep up Fatal Push. Could see a haste creature in case they're monorad somehow. And then maybe play Godless Shrine on turn 3. Right, it looks like a monorad burn deck. So that's going to help lower our life total as well for Death Shadow. Keep up Dire Tactics. Alright, nothing from our opponents. I think I want to just play this Godless Shrine tapped. Can always get Knight of the Evil Legion if we don't feel like Death Shadow is gonna be large enough. And we're gonna probably lose more life with Dire Tactics here. And if they're not playing any creatures, probably implies they've got some burn spells in hand instead. Which at some point they might start pointing at our face as well. As we see a lightning strike and a shock. Alright, so Death Shadow is looking good. Lava Runner we can exile. And another shock. Alright. Well, Ranger's getting double Death Shadow now for sure. So two one mana seven sevens. Can close out the game pretty quickly. Hazarets. I shall chump. And then next turn Ranger lets me dire tactics without losing life to XL Hazarets. And I'll give one of these flying already. Hazrat's gonna play defense. And then we'll Ranger. Which probably wants to get a Guide Mother and another Death Shadow. And then we can Dire Tactics Hazaret. If they kill Ranger in response, we still don't die. And then we should be able to attack for lethal with our Death Shadows. Opponent gonna activate Hazaret instead. And yeah, now Hazaret's gone, and we get to attack for lethal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Knight of the Ebon Legion to start pressuring the opponent, some removal, and eventually Ranger to grab more Death Shadows. Turn one mountain. Into a forest, gruel, into a burning tree emissary, and then a stomp to take out our knight. All right, probably just want to keep up our removal spells this turn, and then we'll hang on to Agadim's Awakening, which I can maybe play untapped to enable Death Shadow as well. Alright, just a tap land into Scavenging Ooze. It's probably a fine removal spell target. And then if I Dire Tactics, I lower my life total, but not by too much. Or we could keep Dire Tactics to maybe take care of a 3-drop, which Fatal Push will have a harder time dealing with. So if I take 2 down to 16, Dire Tactics down to 14, I could go down to 11 and play 2 to Death Shadow, which still dies to another Stomp. But... It does get me on the board, and we have Ranger to get more Death Shadows anyway. 
So I feel like that's okay here. Take three. Play Death Shadow. And we still have Fatal Push at the ready. Next turn I can grow Death Shadow more if I need to. Or we can just play Ranger to get more copies. And then do we want to take two? I think I'll take two and then Fatal Push the Burning Tree end of turn. Just to grow Death Shadow here. But I don't want them to potentially Amber Cleave me next turn. We drew Death Shadow naturally. I think I'm still into playing Ranger. And then we can get maybe Giant Killer plus Fairy. Or I can get another Death Shadow anyway. Mm, I think I like Giant Killer for sure. I may not need Guide Mother if I just get another Death Shadow since we'll have so many big threats to work with. Sure. And then we'll keep the Death Shadow back for now. And then next turn I can play double Death Shadow and kill an opposing creature. So they can't Amber Cleave me this turn. It's gonna be Rekindling Phoenix. Alright, that's actually pretty annoying. Would like another Dire Tactics to deal with it. Giant Killer can't really deal with the O1 token that's left behind, but we can keep up Giant Killer's ability. And then eventually the creature can tap down the Phoenix as well. So for this turn, no real point in attacking. Don't really want to go to 6. So I think we just play double Death Shadow, keep up Giant Killer. And then nothing too bad can happen. While we have Giant Killer in hand. But yeah, another Dire Tactics would be the cleanest solution, or just another Fatal Push after we kill Phoenix with Giant Killer. Because there's going to be a one turn window where the Phoenix gets to hit me, and if it hits me with an Ember Cleave, we would be dead. But when it moves to combat, sends in both. So definitely it looks like an Ember Cleave. We'll just block the giant with all the death shadows. Um, if they cleave five power double strike, we should be okay. Right, there's Ember Cleave. Probably goes on the Phoenix. Nope, goes on the giant. If I giant killer on the giant, I take two. Plus another four, so I would be taking six down to three. And then my Death Shadow should be more than lethal on the way back, so yeah, that sounds good. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. And onto Vanguard also could have helped us lower our own life total to make sure Death Shadow was lethal. So even if they went with Ember Cleave on Phoenix to kind of force the Giant Killer on Phoenix, we should have been able to attack for lethal here. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, our hand's probably keepable. I think I'll start with a pathway over Agadim, since if we pick up something like Thoughtseize. We can maybe grow both our knights next turn by paying three and two more from the Thoughtseize. Right, Godless Shrine doesn't quite do it in the same way, but I guess we can play tapped and play knights. There's definitely a chance I could end up fatal pushing, so maybe it's worth it to take the two. Or at this point, I'm probably not going to need double white, so I could just play another pathway untapped to save myself the life loss if we don't think we are going to need it. And then keep up Fatal Push. Put on the green-white. And Lost Rook Beast Adventured. 
which I could fatal push but probably don't have to. I right, picked up a death shadow but we're pretty far from casting it so I'm just gonna take two here tank with both knights and pump one of them And now we can attack into a 5-5 five five as well. Skyclave Apparition gonna deal with one of them. Sadly gets exiled, so we can't even get it back with our Agadim. Another Godless Shrine. Yeah, if I attack with a Knight and take 3, I'll still be at 14. Not quite enough to play Death Shadow. But we're probably gonna pump here. And then I guess I'll just take the two from Godless Shrine to keep a Fatal Push. And help me play Death Shadow next turn, even if they don't attack me. It's gonna be Yasharn. Okay. Not too much sacrificing going on in my deck. And we'll see if they want to attack us. Just a 1-1 one, one token. That's fine. Apparition attacks. Alright, so we're probably going to see a chum block from the token on knights. Which, you know, I could fatal push it to maybe force them to block with Yasharn instead. If they have another apparition, then holding fatal push to wait until they enable Revolt to kill. Something like Yasharn could also be beneficial. So, close call here. I think I will push the token. And attack. And then I think I will pump. And then play a 3-3 Death Shadow. They most likely have an answer for Knight of the Evil Legion, but then at least we'll have a Death Shadow, so if we draw one of our flying effects we can maybe attack for the win. But we are shields down on Fatal Push at the moment, so another Apparition deals with Knights. And a Luminarch Aspirant's gonna boost herself. And then we'll grow the Death Shadow here. Uh, another Fatal Push. So if I push the Aspirants, we force them to block with Apparition, which will give us a Chum Blocker on the way back. So I think we go for this line. And then we can block Yasharn on the way back. If they somehow remove the token, they enable Revolt for us, and we can kill Yasharn. Redan. Yep. So I can Fatal Push any one of the opponent's blockers, and then if we draw Dire Tactics we can win. Um, if I draw one of my Flying Effects I would want to kill Raidan. So we've got two Demonic Embraces and one Fairy Guide Mother. If I find Ranger of Eos I can also Adventure the Flying. So we essentially have uh, seven Flying Effects, which makes killing Raidan I think better than killing the Beast. Reason to kill the beast is that Dire Tactics uh, is uncastable on the beast since we're only at 4. So, yeah, I think we kill Raidan and hope to draw a Ranger or one of our other flying effects. Thoughtseize unfortunately doesn't do it, but I'm not dead on board since I can 
block your Sharn. And the beast can't attack unless they activate Castle Ardenvale. So we might still be dead here if they figure it out. But we had a lot of outs there. Alright, Pwn goes for Kazandu Mammoth into Archon of Emiria. Sadly, the Archon eliminates a lot of our outs. Block Yasharn, take two down to two. And just a land a draw. Alright, let's see what the opponent was working with here. Another Emirius call. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one, either Thought Seize or Knights. Turn two, Vanguard. And there's a Death Shadow, perfect. So, given that we have turned to Vanguard to start pressuring the opponent, I think we can skip the Knight and for now Thought Seize to know what's up. And then, do I take three from Agadim? If I take five and next turn find another Shockland, I could already play Death Shadow, but I'm probably still gonna stick to Vanguard. So, we'll save the Agadim for now. Alright, opponent on a mono green Stompy deck. Collected Company is the scariest card. But I could also take the Old Growth Troll to potentially throw off their curve so they can grow the Horn Beetles. Yeah, I think I do take the Troll. We might pick up another Thought Seize in the meantime. They don't have Land 4 yet. And uh, Death Shadow is going to be pretty good against Mono Green once we get it large enough. And Giant Killer also going to be quite good in this matchup, so... Let's see if they picked up another 3-drop in the meantime, or if it's just going to be a second Horn Beetle. Alright, Steel Leaf, fair enough. So Dante Vanguard doesn't have any good attacks. Dire Tactics a draw. So we've got a wealth of options. I could Dire Tactics, take 4, play pretty sizable Death Shadow, which we can grow more with the Vanguard. I kind of like that idea. And then Giant Killer can be used next turn. So I can potentially lose 8 more life, making this a 10-10. Let's see what company hits. Mammoth Pelt Collector, that's fine. And yeah, we'll block. I have a 6 6. Scourge also great. So, let's see, can Death Shadow 4 to attack? I think so, and our opponent already concedes since. Yeah, we could attack our opponent for 9, although we are threatening 13 damage. And then we can drop Scourge plus Knight as two more big threats. Knight's gonna grow right away. And then Giant Killer can kill any 4-4 four four that the opponent plays next turn. So we were in pretty good shape. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand has some removal. If we're up against a control deck, it's not gonna be great. But against a lot of creature decks in the format, this is keepable. It's gonna be a tapped steam vents. Alright, I guess tapped steam vents, I think we run out giant killer. Maybe a blue red spells deck with Arc Light Phoenix. Which is not going to have too many 4-powered creatures. Persistent Petitioners instead. Alright, so mill deck. Well, we've got some removal in hand at least. I probably want to keep Dire Tactics to deal with the 1-4, the Legendary Advisor. And then I guess we'll just Fatal Push plus Knight. And 
And then next turn, I can maybe combine the three damage from Awakening plus the damage from Dire Tactics, although I guess we have a human in play, so we're not going to take any damage from Dire Tactics to grow the Knight. Another Petitioners. Alright, Demonic Embrace seems good. Put that on... Uh, maybe the Giant Killer instead of the Knight, since the Knight is going to grow to eventually attack past Petitioners, whereas the same is not necessarily true for our Giant Killer. So just to one Petitioners, not too threatening. And then now I can attack and threaten to pump with Knights, and then probably just play Ranger, getting... What do we get? One Fairy Guide Mother makes sense. Death Shadow is not going to be large enough, so maybe just another Knight of the Evil Legion then. But we'll start by attacking. Eh, they are blocking knights. Maybe they do have some interaction, but I'm happy to oblige. That eh, mills me for one. And then we'll just play a tapped courtyard. Still don't know what the red is for. Aha, uh -huh. Tibble's trickery to counter their own petitioners. And that's guaranteed to hit an Ulamog. Well, now we know what the red is for. So that's another creative way to get around Tibble's trickery's drawback of potentially hitting a bad card. Uh, well, good news is we do have a Dire Tactics, so... we can exile Ulamog. And play a pretty big Scourge of the Skyclaves, which next turn can use Demonic Embrace for lethal. I guess we'll play this tapped. So they need another Ulamog here. They don't, and they explode. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. If we're up against a creature deck, that is. Turn one knight, two removal spells, and embrace. Goes nicely on the knight as well. If they deal with our knight right away, we could be in a bit of trouble. Gonna be a tapped Akum Teeth. Interesting. Well, sadly, don't have a way to lose life to play my Scourge here. Need to find a Shockland or a Nagadim. And a Crawling Baron, so maybe a Colorless Red Ramp deck of some sort. Alright. I don't think I want to take the risk of going Demonic Embrace if they have something like Fire Prophecy here. Instead I can just take the three and play Scourge. And then hope to dodge something like Anger of the Gods or Sweltering Suns. It's gonna be a Chandra's Triumph. Alright, so at least Knight is reasonably likely to survive and then next turn we can embrace it. Bad news is that Fatal Push is probably not gonna do much in the matchup. Double Mind Stone. And we'll keep Agadim in hands in case we need to cast it next turn. 
could see something like Chandra at 4 mana, deal 4 damage to the knight to take it out. Perforous is Intervention instead. Alright, so a knight down. And onto Vanguard. Pretty nice draw, not too many ways for a red deck to deal with it. And we'll keep Agadim in hand since next turn, if we draw land, we could cast it for two, getting back two creatures. At least now I can discard Fatal Push to get back Demonic Embrace. And there's Chandra's Regulator, so our opponent is indeed some sort of Chandra tribal deck. So the best way they have of dealing with Vanguard is maybe through an Ugin the Spirit Dragon, if they're playing that. Death Shadow, also a nice one. Fatal Push gone. Indestructible still gets around the damage prevention from Bonecrusher Giants. for 6 and play 3-3 three, three Death Shadow that we can grow at instant speed. So I'll hang on to Agadim. And then between the 4 life loss from Vanguard and the 3 life loss from Awakening we can kind of dial in the size of our Death Shadow. It's gonna be Chandra Acolyte of Flame. So, thanks to the Regulator, they could potentially double up here. But it's just going to be Intervention for 2, so we'll just pay some life here to save Death Shadow and attack back for lethal. Even picked up our Ranger of Eos. Yeah, Adanto Vanguard especially quite good against a red controlling deck that doesn't have many exile based effects. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand needs Knight to survive in order to play Scourge. But if it does, this hand could work out nicely. Ways to lose life in case the opponent isn't pressuring us so we can at least have a 5 5 Scourge. Facing turn on forest, Lunar Elves. And their tactics. I think I still need to get Knight in play. If our opponent's playing an Elf deck and plays a turn to Archdruid, I'll probably have to dire tactics it. But if I don't start pressuring them, I can't play Scourge, and without Scourge, the sand just doesn't do anything. It's going to be a turn to Yorvo instead. Alright, doesn't die to Fatal Push, but we can Dire Tactics it. And attack for one, and that one damage is already kind of a victory here, since that lets me play Scourge eventually. So this is definitely a hand where Death Shadow would have been better than Scourge, but we'll see how this plays out. Pelt Collector dies to Fatal Push at least. And Harpooner. Well, this kind of looks like a triple Fatal Push turn to me. I guess something else we could do is play my third land untapped, attack with Knights, hoping they just take it. And then I can Scourge and just Fatal Push the Elf, and then Scourge can hold off their other creatures. Yeah, let's try that. If they block with a Harpooner, it's a little awkward. But our opponent takes it. Kill the elf, since our opponent is struggling with mana. And now we can manage the board with our remaining fatal pushes. Could see a fight spell maybe? Nope, not our steel leaf. Yeah, this is probably a collected company deck, so they're not going to have many interactive spells. And then we'll take six. 
Knight of the Avon Legion can attack. Which will grow my Scourge as well. And opponent blocks, so we'll just pump an unfatal push. Nope, opponent takes it. And then we can play Scourge. And then could go to 3 and double Fatal Push, or we can just keep up single Fatal Push and stay at 5. I think I like staying at 5. And it's going to be a Primal Might with the Steel Leaf fighting. Yeah, sadly, still leave us three mana, so can't Fatal Push, but we can Fatal Push after the fight happens, since now Revolt's been enabled. And then we can block one of the smaller creatures and survive. Don't want to cast the Dire Tactics here, but I can pump Knights. Attack for 10. And I'll Fatal Push now in case they have a Hexproof trick. And we've got a nice 15-15 Scourge. Don't think they're playing Questing Beast if they're playing Company. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So yeah, this black-white Death Shadow deck definitely at its best against creature decks like this Mono Green Stompy deck, where we can disrupt the opponent's game plan with our removal spells and hand disruption, and then eventually Death Shadow and Scourge are going to be bigger than whatever creatures the opponent has. And then against burn decks, it's also usually not too bad of a matchup, since we can play very large Death Shadows to close out the game before the opponent can find the lethal burn spells but against more controlling decks that have a lot of answers to our creatures and where our removal spells don't do much, those are going to be tougher matchups. Decks like Elves that can go wide with a whole bunch of tokens can make it difficult if we don't find one of our flying effects, since even a single hit from a flying Death Shadow thanks to Fairy Guide Mother might not be enough to kill the opponent who's going to stay at 20 the entire game, so that can give us some trouble. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.